ahead and get started. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, if you're watching over on uh, channel 955, hopefully this is coming across nice and clear. Uh, this is Coffee with Tyler. Uh, join me in my first step. All right. I know, right? Maybe they can edit that in for me. But now we're live, so who knows? Um, all right. Well, uh, first, thank you um, for, for joining me. For those of you that are watching, I do have some friends, uh, a group of ladies with me. I'm not just talking to myself and, and making this up. But um, who's got the first question? What's on everybody's mind? Polly. Hi. Masks. Oh, I can't let my thunder be stolen. By Thursday, I will have a full update. You'll see it beforehand. Um, I just need to make sure my directors are in full communication and that the team is as well. Um, and so Polly held up her mask and, and probably the question, maybe I shouldn't have assumed, but no, that's right. the assumption was when, when may not have to wear these. As you see, we're not wearing them right now. We're in a small group setting um, and also at the dinner tables. Um, but the CDC did sit, come out and say that if you are vaccinated, uh, you no longer have to wear your mask inside or out. You can resume normal duties, I guess, is or normal activity, rather. And so what does that mean for us, right? Um, you've all been vaccinated. 100% of our independent living residents have been vaccinated. So um, LCS has come out with guidance. And again, I formalized that, and now I just need to communicate that. You will see a memo tomorrow afternoon um, with that guidance and um, we'll go from there. So again, hold tight. Um, I will tell you that regardless of the guidance that's announced tomorrow, employees will still be in masks. Uh, we'll still take the healthcare precautions from the CDC. Um, although we are navigating the list of employees that have been vaccinated as well. Um, and also we're asking visitors to continue to be masked. And if you go into assisted living, memory support, or the health center to visit, we do ask you mask there as well. Again, it's just a higher vulnerable population. Um, and so again, from the employee front, at this time in, in the game, it's just easier for me to say all employees continue to wear masks because again, half my employees do interact in the healthcare setting where they would have to. So again, for those departments that sometimes step in both, I just take the safest, uh, most uh, conservative approach to that and just say all employees uh, will continue to wear masks. So again, hang tight. Um, you'll see a memo tomorrow. Yes. Um, this morning, Willie told me that when working out with him, we don't have to have a mask correct. until we leave that area. Correct. Okay. That is correct. So we're in the gym. We don't have to wear one. Correct. Thank you. You're welcome. What other questions do you have? I figured that would be the one of the questions. <laughs> you were prepared for that one. I was. I was. I even worked over the weekend to make sure I was. So, no, it was nice. I, I was able to work this weekend and see a number of you um, on, on the weekend. It's always, you know, again, as a director team, wanting to make sure you have some type of leadership on site for the majority of even the weekend. Um, and this weekend was my weekend, so um, it was exciting. I was able to get caught up on a few things, but also see some different staff members that I didn't always get to see. And then obviously, you're here seven days a week. This is your home. Um, so it was nice to see and then do a couple follow-up items um, as well and, and see what parties you all are throwing here on the weekends, on Friday nights and what we're walking back into, right? So, yeah. No, but it was great to see. And, and again, kudos to... Um, you know, Laura's team uh, and, and again, the residents um, as we come back to, you know, again, normal here at mm -hmm. East Castle Place. Um, I think we're seeing that um, quite a bit. Um, we're seeing that uh, throughout the community and throughout the campus. So it's very nice. The, um, the thing, the event for the new residents yeah. on Wednesday, Wednesday, is it? Yep. Are you expecting the older residents to be there as well? Yes, because we're gonna have that as a happy hour as well, oh. that all residents will be a part of. So the question that, that was raised was, there's, there's a couple things on the calendar and I have to get my weekly calendars right. Um, on what, but 
the first one is tomorrow for new residents. So when we're taking new residents from 2020, anybody that moved in after January 1st of 2020 till today will come to what we're calling our new resident orientation, our new resident welcome. And that's where I'm gonna have my director team. Although we've probably all met the new residents, we're all gonna do what I call our elevator speeches. Um, so less than two minutes to talk about our departments and what we, what we oversee. And then I also invited the resident council to that um, new resident welcome and those would be coffee and pastries. Then oh. Wednesday, Laura and her team have set up for a new resident social, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And that will start, I believe, in Lindsay Hall and then go out into the patio, which is where everybody should come and enjoy um, the happy hour that's happening on Wednesday. Um, I know that the resident council um, is re, um, reinvigorating, reinvigorating the, the welcome committee um, formally. And so I believe um, Barbara Hill and Judy Christofferson um, are taking on kind of those roles has been held by Betty Perman and a number of residents, but really just kind of putting some formation to that. I'm gonna partner with Anna Landis on the marketing side so that those coffee socials that we've done before that I've been a part of that I believe um, we've held even as recent as a couple of months back, we're gonna make sure those are going on on an ongoing basis. So, and then going forward on probably a quarterly basis, we'll have that new, what I'll call new resident orientation or new resident welcome um, that probably none of you had because we've never really had it, but I've had it in previous communities. And it really just gives the opportunity for residents who moved in in that three month period, an opportunity to make sure that A, they have questions they can get answered, but B, make sure they're putting faces to names and just that re um, kind of introduction. So, um, but yes, Wednesday, all residents will be together. We'll make sure we have name tags, things of that nature, especially for the newer residents. Um, and then uh, have a, a cocktail, soda, beverage. Um, and I think we're ha hopefully gonna have that out in the patio area um on wednesday weather dependent what time um great question pat i don't want to say <laughs> that um on this um i will have a check your weekly calendars you can put them out there what what happened to the resident handbook the picture handbook we were supposed to get new pictures every time a, new, a resident moved in we haven't received anything for eons okay Great question. Uh, the question was the new resident handbook gets the pictures. I'm gonna have to ask um, Anna and uh, Fern and Maureen um, where we stand on that. I know we had talked about just issuing those once every three months or once every quarter, um, just because as residents comes in, it does take some time to get their photos, to get their biographies, to get that all printed. Um, and to do it after every single resident is a, a little bit cumbersome just because then we, we miss it. So. Um, I'll circle back with Maureen and, and Anna and see where we're at next, when the next distribution will be. What other questions? Yeah, my usual one. When are they going to put rollers on the front legs <laughs> and the dining room chairs? Doris, I think this is uh, the, the fifth straight time you may have asked that. So uh, it, might, it, it might be more, but um, actually I was in the dining room on Thursday evening and, and another resident asked the same question. And, and again, I think that'll be addressed at the state of the castle. Um, I'll be meeting with Eric to see if we can retrofit something currently or what that looks like. Um, as many of you know, the dining room will get a full update that will come with new furniture. Casters will be on the front of the chairs with the new furniture, but I don't know if we can wait a year. Um, so again, that's where I want to see if there's something we can do um, ahead of that. So casters on the front, um, again, we have them in, I think the, the club room um, has the casters and, and a lot, I mean, everybody's really been excited about those casters just on the front, right. not the back. No, um, we don't want to roll away. Correct, <laughs> we don't want to roll away, so. Thank you for that wonderful thing that we're doing now in the dining room, four to a table. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Well, so uh, nice. So, Nancy, you just mentioned uh, the, the dining room is, we'll call kind of back to normal, we have yeah. four to a table. 
Again, the thank yous go directly into Carlos and Sam and Mary and Steph um, and the dining room team who have been working so hard and so diligently over the course of the last, well, forever, but really in the last month to get things back to normal, so to speak, um, to, to help in those service levels. Um, again, appreciate you as residents understanding as we are still asking for reservations, yes. that does help monitor the mm -hmm. flow and, and the capacity in the dining room. So we're able to do four at a table and things of that nature. So we do look just to, I know that, again, some of you may already have fallen into a pattern of going down around 5.30 or going down at six or going down at five. Um, but again, those reservations just really help us and allow us to provide a higher level of service um, because again, having 60 residents or even 40 residents come in at, all at once, <laughs> it, it does put a pretty large tax both on the back of the house, so Kathleen and Steph and, and who's plating the food and cooking the food, but also our servers. Uh, because again, our servers can't provide that service um, when again, we have residents that are coming in at different points in the service as well. So I, I think even if you remember, it, it still does happen from time to time, but you may have come in as a resident was having dessert and you were on your appetizer, you know, and, and again, that just is tough from a flow, from a service standpoint, because again, the servers think, okay, I've given them the dessert and coffee and then they don't touch base because then this resident sat down and now they're on appetizers and it's just not a very, very smooth flow. So again, reservations elevate what we're able to do from a service standpoint as well as a, a product standpoint. What I mean by product is, is that hot, fresh food, the crispier food, things of that nature. Um, and again, I, I'm not here to say that there's not opportunities in the kitchen um, and that that's the end all be all and that you'll have um, the most delicious, freshest, everything that you want every single night. I mean, again, there's going to be certain things that come up, but again, I think in all, um, our food and beverage team has done a fantastic job in, in really trying to continue to elevate the service and, and quality of food um, that, that we're providing. And again, that goes back to everybody being vaccinated, being able to open the dining room, having more residents uh, of not just the same family at one table. Um, and again, it was really, really nice to see um, when walking through the dining room um, last week, the, the camaraderie conversations oh, and, and uh, it was really, really nice to see, so. And they're starting to remember birthdays. That's yes. wonderful. When you have a birthday, they'll come out and sing and give you a cake. Mm. Good, good. Because I know we had our, our birthday celebrations mm -hmm. again for the first time uh, in May, and we'll do it again in June. So, good. I have a question about on the website. I was looking at it for something else, and I noticed that there's pictures of the renovation. Now, is that the way it's going to look, or is that just a representative of what could happen? Great question. And so um, what Holly mentioned was um, that on our website, if you're looking at eastcastleplace.com, you'll scroll down and then you'll see a, a tab that says the expansion and renovation, something new is coming to East Castle. If you click on that, you kind of get into a new page of what the expansion is about. And on there, you see what we call artist renderings. Those renderings are not representative of what East Castle Place will look like. Those were probably from a few months back, not even um, a few months back, um, about something that could happen. That's what I thought. We just hired our interior designer Friday. We need the interior designer to partner with the architect. Those were architect renderings. Mm -hmm. um, so again, could it look like that? Sure, it's a concept. But again, the art, the, now that the interior designer is on board, then, and she's walked this campus, knows what we're wanting and, and, and what we, we, we look like. And again, we need to hear your opinions too on um, what that looks like. So again, those are purely just renderings and are not accurate as to final product by any means. Okay. So. So yeah, that, that's, the, that's always the concern um, when you put up those initial renderings of, of something that was made in, in a very brief amount of time with very little input. Is that what he's got? No, 
And it's tough to get out of your mind. But it looked nice. It did look nice. <laughs> it did. I, I will give AG credit. Um, and and that one of their one of their architects um, put together a very nice rendering uh, or renderings. Um, I think something that is in those renderings that you will see though is that open concept. Mm -hmm. um, you know that is something that you want to see. And, and a bar is planned um, because again, through many of what you've said. Um, in resident surveys and what we know the incoming residents will want um, is, is that pub bar feel, um, but also it's an active space where cards can be played and that it's a nice meeting place um, for, for the morning coffees, you know, things of that nature. So it's, it's an active space that will change throughout the day, but it's ultimately something that will extend also the dining room um, so that, you know, the overflow used to be the club room. Mm -hmm. Well, now it will be the bar or something of that nature, the pub. Um, so again, do we know where the pub's going to be? It will be right now. It's where it's, the club room is located. Okay, I gotcha. So, so again, um, I I will go through a, a more formal, high level presentation probably next month's state of the castle. I'll talk a little bit about it at this state, uh, this month's state of the castle. But next month I should have even more information and more accurate information um, because again, we're still in what I'll call somewhat of the earlier schematic drawings. Um, now we have spaces, now we need to do programming. And that's where I need Laura, that's where I need you all to say, this is what we want, this is what makes sense for us um, to, to do. And again, um, that, that's still all to be determined, so. Okay. Just curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, they, they are pretty. Um, yeah. But again, I, I don't, it depends on what the rest of the campus looks like and, and if that's the direction we go. Again, we, we hired our interior designer, RDG, um, is the interior design firm. Um, they're based in St. Louis. Um, exceptional knowledge, exceptional uh, work that they have done at senior living across the board. Um, LCS development. AG Architect has worked closely with them um, before, and uh, I think we just have a very, very strong partner um, in RDG in what they'll be able to provide, um, both from their knowledge, but also the way they communicate, the way they want resident input, um, and then how that comes to life. So, very good. So, yeah. What else? What else is on everybody's mind? So did everybody know that Wisconsin is like one of the only places in the nation or world I've seen that has a pneumonia front? Yeah. <laughs> did everybody yeah. see that? A pneumonia front, I believe is what yeah. they call it. Yeah, I think Paul Joseph, who was the weatherman here years ago, invented that phrase. Really? I think so, if I remember You might right. be right. All right. Yeah, what so, is a pneumonia? So it's when the temperature drops drastically, oh, oh, oh. you know, in a few mm -hmm. minutes. Okay. So yeah, and I learned, I was watching, you know, my son is teething right now, so sleep <laughs> is coming back to being optional apparently. Um, so we were up at 5.30 hanging out, and so I turned on the news and I saw the pneumonia front. And again, I felt it, I was over out in Waukesha, and I, I'm sure you felt it here on Sunday, where it started off at like 75, 77 degrees, windows were closed, and all of a sudden, went outside, I'm like, oh, maybe I could turn, you know, open up the windows. <laughs> open up the windows, and all of a sudden, it was like, well, why is the heat kicking on? Because it's 52 degrees in here. And so, again, just a drastic change. You know, I, I was talking to a few uh, uh, staff members, and they just mentioned they went from, you know, Brookfield to Milwaukee in the matter of an hour, and they came and tank tops and shorts and then they ended up being in sweatshirts and pants by the time they right. came back. Right. So right. Right. interesting, yeah. interesting weather. So it but, has to drop a certain number of degrees. I think it's more than 16 in an hour yeah. okay. to be called that. All right. So that's drastic. Mm -hmm. If you drop that much temperature oh, in one hour, one right. hour. I mean, mm -hmm. it was what I see 77 and, and then down to 52 or something mm -hmm. of that nature. I mean, absolutely incredible i mean a 20 25 degree swing i mean that is going from shorts and a t-shirt to pants and a sweatshirt <laughs> but i guess that's why wisconsin gets its reputation too you know in the matter of a week sometimes we can experience all four seasons 
Yeah. You know, yeah. like in February. Day. Yeah, it was 80 degrees in February that one time. Oh, so right. incredible, but that's why we love it, right? <laughs> so the joy of living near the lake. I know, I know. And we have the Bucks in the playoffs. Have to mention that. So yes. for tuning in, won by a buzzer beater last time. Yeah. It was close, so we'll see how they do tonight. And then, of course, the Brewers are in full swing. Did you hear that the Brewers will be at 100% capacity by the middle of June? Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Middle of June, 100% capacity. So I think June 24th is the date that I keep coming to. So, again, um, and a, a number across the nation. I saw the eighth state get to a 70% vaccination rate. Um, so out in Vermont... And Delaware, and I believe it was Rhode Island, is the, is the yeah. state that I saw got to 70% vaccination. Last I saw Wisconsin, we were in the 46% mark for vaccination. Um, again, here at East Castle, we're 100% from an independent living resident standpoint. Even for those newer residents that have income or that are incoming. Um, and again, I think the question may have been raised previous of you know, if there's a booster shot or something of that nature, right. will East Castle Place be able to provide that? And I think I, the response I had was, yes. I, I believe with our partnership with CVS, we will be able to provide that. Mm -hmm. I assume it's gonna be, again, kind of in that tiered system where anybody over the age of 55 will qualify first, um, but I'm sure it'll be those that were vaccinated first. So I think the supply will be there. I have not heard from our pharmacy, I have not heard from the CDC, I have not heard from Medicare, Pfizer, Moderna, any of those entities that we do need a booster shot. So again, I think this is just a feeling that some of us have, um, much like a, maybe a flu shot. So again, we'll, we'll play that by ear, but I want, to be, want you to be confident that as East Castle residents, we'll make sure that you know, we are able to, to get that access before. And you won't have to go anywhere. <laughs> this is a minor story. point, but the apartment directly above Doris here has had every light in the place on 24-7 for over a week now because I pointed that out to the desk a week ago and they said they tell maintenance, but the lights are all still on. Doris, what apartment are you in? 3306. So it's 4306. Okay. We'll walk up there tonight, make sure those lights get off. And I know that sometimes, um, you know, we'll have work going on in there or, or marketing will walk through, but we can do a better job. And, and shutting off some of those lights can serve some of that energy. So, no, that, that, when you're seeing that, um, definitely let us know. So uh, uh, I can walk up there and get those lights. My mother always used to say, do you think we own stock in the electric company? I mean, my wife asked me if we we're uh, cooling the outdoors this, this weekend because I left one of the doors open. Oh. And I said, I thought you were coming in after me. So, did I the mean, dog get a likely no, story? No, no, the dog did not get out. A uh, likely story. So, so yes, it, it, I don't own stock in, in the air conditioning company either. So I couldn't even use that excuse. So maybe I'll have to buy buy a share and say, well, we're yes, helping out our, is. you know, we're supporting ourselves, you know, <laughs> be better stewards of, of the energy and resources we have always. You could call me and I could just walk up and do it. If yeah. I can get the fire uh, doors open. I'll call you. <laughs> yeah. But that's my neighbor. So yeah. 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 No, I, no, we can take care of that. I thought maybe they were painting in there. They probably are. Uh, but again, not they're not midnight. painting at midnight. Oh, at least they shouldn't be. Are you seeing people when they're painting at midnight? I, I did was, not see anyone in I there. I mean, unless you've got somebody volunteering at night helping us out. <laughs> Wait, you don't want that. I, I don't. <laughs> That's something I do need to know. <laughs> so, all right. Anything else? Otherwise, just want to give a quick note for the State of the Castle meeting on Thursday this week, 1 o'clock. If you have questions, you can still submit them. Um, to the front desk and they'll make sure they get to the state of the castle uh, agenda um, also we're having a memorial day cookout on thursday um, i will be behind the grill so stop out if you'd like for a burger or a hot dog um, and um, we'll kick off kind of the summer season so to speak and again the, the memorial day cookouts focus for employees but of course residents are also welcome 
So mm -hmm. be happy to happy to cook you one up. So <laughs> outside of that, I I mean I'm hoping to get my landscaping done on Friday too. <laughs> so I will not be here on Friday, um, but um, it uh, the show will go on, no doubt. <laughs> so all right. Well, thank you everybody for joining. Thank you for those of you that tuned in. Uh, I look forward to next time. Um, and again, uh, we'll see everybody around. Stay well. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.